Hey guys, it's me, Fidel, with Wise Press Experience. It's your Gideon Positive Ones, and thank you guys for this cool, awesome video. This video is part of a series called Blindness.edu. Basically, I'm giving you guys tips and tricks, numerous different things about blindness, visual impairment. So let's get right into it. So I want to talk about something very important. Um, at least in my realm. So if you're an Android view, uh, Android user, um, this might be seem interesting to you. If you're an Apple viewer, you know, an Apple user, this is very important for you. Um, but the reason why this is being, being put into the blindness, blindness.edu series is because it's important, uh, to recognize the evolution of the iPad and the iPhone and Apple in general. Um, so basically here's the thought. So, um, I was checking out stuff, you know, I had never, I was kind of behind on this announcement, but from what I understand is that, uh, there is the new iPads coming out and iPad pro, and then they're planning and transitioning the idea of the iPad pro down to the previous, uh, you know, the previous sizes for future iPads. And then also for changing the models of the iPhones to the iPhone X kind of format. Um, the iPad Pro is going to be in the iPad or the or the iPhone X format. So it's going to have no home button. It's going to have less and bezel and everything is going to be touch oriented. Now, why am I explaining all of this in a blindness.edu video? The reason being is because uh, <laughs> if you don't know, um, a lot of us who have blindness or visual impairment prefer tactile abilities. This means clickable buttons, you know, physical keys, you know, things like that. And to have a new system where we're taking away the whole tactile aspects of a phone or a tablet, um, you know, it, it changes things. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, blindness visual impairment users who use Apple products use a lot of touch gestures and a lot of things like that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that to have the ability or the accessible ways of changing something via like a home button or a lock button or a mute or whatever type of buttons, um, to have the majority of those taken away is a problem uh, because of our tactile abilities. Now we have to figure out how to do gestures with voiceover and all these different things. And believe me, there is some, you know, uh, okay type things. Like, I mean, you could, you could have it. So like it does vibrate in some ways and this and that. Um, and, but in my opinion, I think that the way that Apple's going, um, they're going to have a lot of, a lot of trouble with accessibility coming in the future. And let me explain why is because for order to have that ta the the tactile experience any type of any more uh if they continue going forward using the i iphone x kind of model system where we're taking away the home button and the embezzles so like 90 percent of the screen is the actual phone uh you know it's going to present a challenge for those with blindness visual impairment we're not going to be able to access things physically or have like physical components without attaching another device to it which a lot of us do have in certain instances, but in others, there's, you know, people are strapped for budgets and they don't have the ability to pay for extra, um, you know, sources of technology. Uh, every time that Apple, uh, upgrades, he, they, they change it in the aspects of that. They bring in the new touch oriented phones and then they get rid of the physical oriented phones. And, um, because of this, you know, the, this new change that's going on, those old phones that have the physical abilities are going to be phased out in the long run. Now, like I said, you know, this isn't entirely bad. It's just means that there's going to be a lot of changes. Um, I'm just saying from a standpoint of myself and from other viewers and other people that I've heard, this is going to be taking away the tactile experiences that a lot of blind and visually impaired people want. Um, you know, they, you know, all, of course we're all getting used to like listening to audio wise using voiceover and things like that. But I think when we start losing the, um, the tactile experience, uh, it gets harder for a lot of us. Um, you know, so that's something I'm actually, I'm actually going to bring this up in another video, uh, which I'm going to talk about more tactile experiences, but I want to touch on something else here. This is another thing. Um, blindness, visual impairment wise, it's also a major issue with having 90% of the screen, no embezzles, no touch button or uh, no clickable buttons. The overall device is more breakable. So they're now less durable than they used to be with the bezels and the, and the physical buttons. So because of this, if you drop your phone on the ground face first, it's going to crack. And the reason why it's going to crack is because it has such a big 
area of uh, the screen. And this is a problem for those with blindness and visual impairment because, well, let's face it, everybody, we've dropped our phones, we've lost them, um, you know, all sorts of different stuff. You know, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to say that we're clumsy or whatever, but what I'm just saying is that this has happened to a lot of us. And here's the thing, like, let's say we go get, we, we're like, okay, well, the solution is a case, right? Well, let me tell you something. The only way that you're going to have any type of protection on the front part of the screen of the, of the device is to have a screen protector because the way that they create the the um, cases and the way that they're created through Apple and through um, the majority of other products is that they protect the backing and the back and the sides of the device. They don't go out and make it so that the whole device is wrapped. Like I have a, um, like I'll use this as an example. I have uh, an old iPod that I still use. Now this is a uh, Griffin Survivor case. And what this does is that this wraps around the back and protects it on the back, but you know, take away this, take away the clip there. So this is just the device. Uh, and then you go around the front and the front has a built-in screen protector with it. So it's plastic over the screen. So they don't think anything like this anymore. They're not going to make it anymore because the screen is going to be so large that there's going to be no sense in having a front face plate because there's not going to be any room because the whole front part of the phone or the iPad is the screen, which if you had some sort of a face plate on there, it would inhibit the use while having it in the case and defeats the process of protecting it. So, um, so what I want you guys to do is, you know, these are my thoughts, you know, I, I've talked to people myself, you know, I've had my personal thoughts. But what do you guys think? Uh, this is personally, I think, a it's going to be an interesting change for Apple because, like I said, is that eliminating the physicalities of, you know, the previous devices and going primarily for touch is not only going to have some issues with, you know, accessibility, blindness, visual impairment, and tactiles, but it's also going to have issues with durability, usability, and um, I don't know, you know, it's... it's uh, <laughs> It's something that I hope they figure out. I hope that they don't get rid of the full tactile or that, you know, getting rid of the home button and the lock button and things like that. But we have no idea. It's everybody seems to want the giant or more bigger screens on their phones in less touch um, tactile buttons. So we will see. But let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. Like, favorite, and share the video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. There's more content coming out. I still want you to miss it. Otherwise, remember the perseverance is your key, the impossible. And I will see you guys in future videos.